save the king! Hello and welcome to a special episode of Pod Save the King. I am Russell Myers, your host for today. I am joined by mirror photographer Ian Vogler. And we are in Cape Town, a beautiful South Africa where we've been for the past few days with Prince William covering his Earthshot Prize Awards, the environmental awards that have uh, really gone on to uh, greater things this year, I think. We're the best ever. We've been lucky enough to go to a few of them in, in the past. The first one in London, then in Boston last year in Singapore, and a real buzz about the place in South Africa. The first time the awards have been in Africa and uh, and a first trip of the year for William because uh, it's been a pretty topsy-turvy year for the royal family. Of course, the King and the Princess of Wales being diagnosed with cancer earlier in the year. Fortunately, great news a couple of months ago that the Princess of Wales said that she had finished her chemotherapy treatment. We, of course, uh, as you will know, um, if you joined us just a few days ago last week, we were in um, Australia in Samoa uh, covering the King and Queen's tour, which was fantastic as well. So it's a really busy period at the moment for the royal family. And uh, the reason we're joining you so late on this Thursday evening is because uh, the Prince of Wales has just given an interview to the UK media talking about Earthshot, talking about his hopes for the future and his different role, not only within the monarchy, but we've seen him taking on a, a, a bit more of a statesman-like role, meeting the South African president this year, uh, this week, um, alongside his Earthshot duties, but also uh, tackling the issues of how it's been for him. And of course, he's had the um, really unenviable task of sitting back and seeing his father and his wife being diagnosed with cancer what did that mean for him what did it mean for his three young children and he's described the shock of uh, of both his father and his wife's diagnosis as the hardest year in his life and um and ian i mean you've uh, you've seen the the, the 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 quotes of the the interview that we've written up it'll be going live in just uh, a couple of hours i mean this is this is really um Interesting stuff from William because, uh, you know, not only does he describe it as the hardest year of his life, he said that it had been brutal, he said uh, it's been dreadful, um, and really trying to keep everything on track has been really, really difficult. I think that's, you know, we, we've heard from the King, we've heard from the Princess of Wales with that video that she did with William and the rest of the family, but this is really William being searingly honest, and, uh, and I felt it was a, a, a real side of his personality we haven't seen before. Yeah, it's probably the most honest and open interview we've ever had from the Prince of Wales, as we know him now. I don't recall him ever being this honest and open, do you? No, I mean, it's usually candid. I mean, I've used uh, the word searingly honest, and uh, not only does he talk about his own feelings, but all, I think, you know, really interestingly plays, pays tribute to Charles and Kate's bravery for the way that they've dealt with uh, their ordeal. He said, I'm so proud of my wife, I'm proud of my father for handling the things that they have done. But from a personal family point of view, it's, it's been brutal. I mean, that, the language used like that. And uh, I've written a comment piece, which will be in the mirror later. And... Um, and I, I, I really wanted to explore the fact of, you know, the, the brutality that he speaks of is something that, um, we're unfortunately, far too many families, not only in Britain but across the world, will experience. I mean, cancer, as we, a lot of us know, is a, a merciless, unwelcome guest in a lot of people's lives. And, uh, you know, the, the royal family are often put on a pedestal, aren't they, of, uh, you know, look, at it's all right for them. They live in castles and palaces and they have all the luxuries and privilege that is afforded to them as being a member of the royal family but when you know health is wealth as they say and when your health isn't with you as we've seen with members of the royal family this year then it's a it's a real great leveler isn't it it really is yeah you can't beat yeah you, know, you can't beat your health as it were your, your health is is going to possibly catch up with you and cause you these kind of problems i mean let's not forget they've got three young children yes they're obviously very privileged but the upset, the mental anguish of having a member of your family, you know, diagnosed with can cancer. Wherever you are in the world, whatever you've got, that is still a massive shock. And he wants to keep the show on the road, keep Earthshot going. It's, it's his baby, isn't it? It's his big project. 
So just to get here is uh, is an achievement in itself. Yeah, I mean, it has been a huge, huge undertaking. We've not have seen the, the huge uh, efforts that go into a shot. And I think you know, we agree that um, in, in Cape Town this week, it's been the best, the best one, really. The sort of the exuberance, the enthusiasm that was uh, we were met with in South Africa has been unmatched. And so it'll be really interesting to see where the shot prize goes next, because we've had, uh, of course, we've been in Europe, we've been in Asia, North America, um, and there will be um, some more details of that in the coming weeks and months, I'm sure. A lot of excitement here about where the, the, the next uh, launch is for, for a shot. But um, I think William has, has, has been energised. Of course, it's, it's been great news that the Princess of Wales has finished her, her cancer treatment. Um, and, we, of course, we were with the King and Queen in Australia. We had uh, some, some words with the, the palace aide saying that the King is going to be back to a full schedule of events next year. You know, what does that mean for him, both at home and abroad? I think it's a, an exciting time. Of course, it's been such a tumultuous time over the last few months for them. But you know, William is almost emerging into a different role. You know, so seeing not only speaking to great with kids, we saw him playing rugby this week with uh, some young people from the townships using rugby as a, a way and sport as a way to get out of poverty. We've seen him mixing with the entrepreneurs, really giving that platform to the uh, to the people who are surrounded with Earthshot. But also, interestingly, we saw him meeting uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, and that gives you an indication, I think, of how William sees himself as this statesman. Like, it's a definitely a new role for him uh, as Prince of Wales. He's, he's sort of edging towards the top job. Um, no doubt, you know, he's not, not sort of waiting in the wings to take over the top job, as it were, but I, I definitely think there is room for, for William to be aligned with Bran Britain, right? We saw, saw um, David Lammy, the Foreign Secretary, here with him. Obviously, obviously discussions were, were had between him and the Foreign Secretary about um, how he can launch these ideas, how he can talk on a bigger platform. But I think, you know, he definitely is moving into a different direction, isn't he? He's, beca yeah, he's becoming a statesman, isn't he? That's the thing. The Prince of Wales has always been sort of the, the next in line to the throne. And the last Prince of Wales had a, a long wait, as we know, in his role. So diplomacy became something for him to do maybe a bit later on in life. But William seems to be grasping the diplomatic side of things right now. He was excited to be meeting with the President and our Foreign Secretary, wasn't he? So. I think it's quite interesting to see him form, forming himself into this statesman, diplomacy, mm. those, all of those, you know, roles, well, rather than just opening and clo opening things. Like, yeah, going to a hospital. Yeah, going to opening center. a community centre is one thing, but he wants to get. I think he gets much more out of being on the world stage and and representing Britain as a diplomatic. Envoy, should we? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you're talking about uh, it's almost like a, it is a diplomatic role, isn't it? We've seen um, him in Israel. We've, we've been to Israel and Palestine with him. We're talking about um, wanting to make the Middle East peace process one of his roles, I suppose, if he can help in that way. Uh, the big projects he's taking on, and we're talking about the global climate emergency. Then you're talking about homelessness with Homewards that's gone on to uh, hopefully bigger and better things. We've just had the first year this year. And that, but these are big, big sort of life-changing, generational changing um, aspects of life, right? And he also mentioned the fact that uh, the Princess of Wales, with her work with early years, this is, this is the way that they're sort of moving in a different direction. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a different direction of the monarchy, almost, that his father or his grandmother would have done. Uh, I mean, he said that last year in, in Singapore, about how he, he wants to move the, the, the monarchy in a different direction. That, um, and, you know, he's a young man. I can say that because I'm, I'm his age. <laughs> so right. but, perhaps yeah, he's not that right, young. Yeah, right. we, we don't need to buy age. No, no. <laughs> but I think, yeah, you're right. It's less, it's, it's less tiaras and crowns and more firm handshakes and big conversations on on big issues but is optimism what we're seeing. as well I think optimism oh, yeah. is key Tons of and he spoke about that quite a lot this week and optimism for the future you know we are dealing with a climate emergency the global financial crisis sort of things are you know the, the cost of living crisis there's a lot of things going on in the world but 
if you really tap into the optimism of the next generation, as we have seen in South Africa, I mean, Africa is obviously a huge continent made up of many different nations. A lot of nations have uh, a populace that is of uh, a generational age much below ours uh, in Europe. So it's about tapping into that, that, that resourcefulness of the younger generation and how they develop their ideas. And, you know, it, I mean, talking to young people, as we have done a lot this week, their, their exuberance for these ideas um, is unmatched. I mean, again, Africa contributes the least to climate change, but almost has the, the, the most to lose from the global climate emergency. So I think that's why it was so important to, uh, to come here. And again, I'm just sort of reading some of my notes are there that he made. You're talking about uh, Urshot, the culmination of you know, bringing all these people together. He wants to, he said, I, I want to help people's lives and I'm doing something that is hopefully genuinely meaningful. It's very important that my role and my platform is here for doing something good. And that's the future, right? So we can always really see the direction he's going in. So I think it'll be very, very interesting to see, uh, to see that in the next few years. Certainly is. He is down with the kids, isn't he? When we went to the um, event at the school, Ocean View, wasn't it? Yeah. These kids were literally queuing up to tackle him at rugby. <laughs> it, was, it was great. And he just... <laughs> well, he like, get the king or tackle yeah, the king. Tackle yeah. the king. There was two, t- nine, well, a nine and a ten-year-old, I think, who were absolutely determined to get him down. But he, he, he fought off well, didn't he? Much to the amusement of Jason Leonard. And England, England rugby England hero. Rugby, World and Cup the Beast. Winner. And the Beast, South African indeed. Springbok superstar, the Beast. Well, you know, we always bring you the big, uh, the big topics. We're tackling the big issues here on Pod Save the King and at the Daily Mirror. But uh, I think we, we need to speak about the beard because it seems as though Prince William's beard is here to stay. And, of course, we, uh, we wouldn't have done our duty as a responsible world-leading journalist if we didn't speak about the beard. And, um, and interestingly, he said that uh, Charlotte did not like it the first time. I mean, listen to this. He said, I got floods of tears the first time I grew a beard, so I had to shave it off, but then it grew back. But I thought, hang on a second, and I convinced her it was going to be okay. I mean, <laughs> they it... just grow back, do they? <laughs> he stopped shaving is what happened there. Yeah, I mean, but a lot has been made about his sort of new look. I mean, he was wearing, sort of dressed down, he was wearing quite a you know, fancy blazer with Prince of Wales check. He was wearing these sustainable shoes that were made by one of the Earthshot finalists that are made from completely plastic free the compost compostable as well um it seemed as though he was you know, i mean i'll come to a bit of his quotes but he seemed so he was he was having fun this week he was he was the exuberance of youth was not lost on him and um and he seemed to be taking that forward and that really tied in with, with where we are and who we're speaking to yeah he was wearing a blazer last night on the for the earth shot awards it was what, what's the word? For a thrift shop? A second hand I know, shop, yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine him yeah. down the King's Road yeah. going through the uh, going through the charity shops yeah. looking for him. But yeah, apparently oh, yeah, quite a posh those charity yeah, shops yeah, down yeah, the King's yeah, Road. There's a very right? nice one down the King's very nice Oxfam yeah. down the King's Road. But uh, I thought it was again interesting that he's he's willing to sort of expose himself almost talking about his feelings again this is totally William in a different direction you wouldn't have got from the king we're seeing it a lot more now bizarrely I mean interestingly that he's talking about his his prostate he's talking about his cancer he's talking about his, his hopes for the future even though he's nearly 76 and going through cancer it's, it's none of it's worries me it's all about optimism right so if you're feeling feeding all of this in to the way you're living your life life um you know, that that's got to have a positive as- aspect right we're always talking about or william's talking about mental fitness and it seems to be rubbing off
seems to be. I, I think there was another great quote, wasn't there? You know, he had said, as a family, we, you know, we do our best like, in terms of recycling and our use of energy. I mean, any parent out there will know you've got to chase your kids to turn the lights off. I'm just thinking to myself, you know, is he have to chase George <laughs> and go, turn the lights off, we're going out But again, now. that's a great leveller. And, it, and I, I really liked that. The other day he was speaking about, I hope my kids are proud of me. And, you know, you know he's got children or you've got uh, younger members of your family that they are so impressionable they you you do want to leave some sort of legacy whether that's you or I with our families our parents or you you can't you do want people to be proud of you of what you're doing in the world and and he's he's not just doing this and leaving it and going home uh, there is a genuine genuine wish to in quotes change the world for the better leave a legacy and I think that and I have to read some of his quotes. I enjoy my work, but I enjoy pacing myself and, and, and making sure I've got time for my family too. So it, it's it's double edged here. So I, listen, he's obviously going to take time to to go back to take stock of what's um, gone on this year. It's been a very very difficult year for the royal family, um, but I think we're we're ending on a high. You know, right? there's been a lot of positivity from the King and Queen's tour of uh, of Australia. We we've, we've saw how I mean, we said didn't we win Australia? The King did look tired, but there was a lot of aspect the jet lag there in his age. But he really was sort of relishing it at the uh, at, by by the time we were at the end. And William today, he, said he, he was excited, he was emotional. And, and if you haven't seen the Earthshot Awards, it was beamed live on YouTube, I'm sure it's still there, but we've got loads of coverage as well. And one of the things from the, the launch of Earthshot uh, Awards on Wednesday night was, um, was a performance of The Lion King. What's the... Circle of Life, that's the, the circle. It was a performance of the Circle of Life on top of Table Mountain, and, and he and I were lucky enough to get up there for a couple of hours. And I mean, talk about breathtaking, surely one of the world's wonders. Um, and he was saying that he felt emotional, and, and that's and no doubt too with his kids and the, the fact that we're here in Africa and the, the optimism of youth that we keep coming back to. And, and it has been a success. And, and, I, and I'm sure that when we're looking towards where this will go over the next few years it's uh, there's there is there is a lot to be hopeful about yeah i think so we we were covering the green carpet event last night and there was a lot of um musicians and acts particularly you know particularly big acts in africa that we weren't really sure who they yeah, are but when you look it, into it, diamond platinum big shout out to mr Di i think it's mr diamond platinum yeah, to, to you I, yeah to me <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, the guy is incredible. He's got 60 something million followers. He's from Tanzania. He's an incredible artist. And that is directly because they want to appeal to this, you know, to a younger to, audience. Absolutely. I think that's something we haven't seen first. We're talking about formulating the ideas. And um, William was, was speaking about that. And, and also, once you formulate the ideas, you've got, to, you've got to tap into big corporations. Obviously, they're giving 50 million pounds uh, away. There's a a million pounds of five winners each year over the next 10 years or the 10 year period but he was speaking also about you know t it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of balancing to get it right and he and he spoke about his frustrations actually about trying to get the big corporations to come on that journey with him right so who are the big corporations run by normally pale stale old men Normally, in the, you're talking about the, the, the global giants, there is a sort of um, a bit a bit of an imbalance, I suppose, in the in the, in the big corporations throughout the world, but of an elder generation. And who are the change makers? Who are the people that are leading from the front? They are the the youth, right? They are the people that you need to bring on this journey. And I mean, what a week we've had! And President Trump coming back into the White House, Kamala Harris speaking to young people just uh, yesterday about, what was it today? I'm losing track of time. But her address I thought was really interesting because there was loads of young people in the crowd and she was saying, you know, do not give up hope. Just because we don't win now doesn't mean that we're not going to win. And just because we've lost this doesn't mean we're going to keep on losing. It's all about changing the direction, having conviction in, uh, in your beliefs that you have the power to make changes. And definitely William was talking about that not only just about the environmental challenges that uh, exist here in Africa and beyond, but the 
real opportunities that lie in front of uh, in front of people all over the world, and uh, and hopefully he's giving that platform for them to succeed. Yeah, he was very popular here, wasn't he? There was there was a crowd today at the fishing harbour that I went to. There was about three or four hundred people, all really excited to, to see him here. It was been a low key visit, so there haven't been crowds and crowds of people. Yeah, not like where we saw really, at the Sydney Opera House. Yeah. But, it, but again, I think it's it's a, it's not a royal tour, is it? It's no. very much centred on a shot, and so um, it is a bit more intimate in that sense. Yeah, yeah. and there was some. Oh, I tell you, I was in the press room last night during the show itself and when the um, a local company here from South Africa won an award every single journalist in the room was up on their feet you know cheering and shouting because they were there they know that what that investment means in terms of changing the future of, of this great nation and this great continent it's so important it's a beautiful continent Africa it's a beautiful country South Africa but so much needs to be done to make sure that it's here to be enjoyed in future generations. Yes, for sure, and not not just you know, the the wildlife aspect of it, uh, but also you know, the, the 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 kids that are living here and the young people. I think there's a lot there's a lot to be hopeful for. I mean, it's it's one thing you know you can criticise Prince William and always look at this um, this aspect. I mean, there's been two big stories. We can't get away from these the big stories which happened on Sunday and Monday this week. There was a, a Daily Mirror exclusive by our investigations editor about the Duchy of Cornwall. Uh, of course, Prince William is a, is a landowner. He's a landlord. Um, and our exclusive, if you haven't read it, by our investigations editor Nick Summerlad went into details about some of the poor living conditions in some of the accommodations on the Duchy's land and the Duchy have said themselves that you know, Prince William is in, is in a transitional period. He is trying to get to grips with this huge portfolio. He actually does want to make changes. They are happening a little bit more slowly. And then there was the Sunday Times Channel 4 uh, dispatches investigation which really went into the finances of the royal family. And I always think that this is you know, a difficult concept, and not just for us as journalists, it's difficult enough, but for people on the outside. It's almost like rich people are rich and the firm, as they're called, earn money through a load of different businesses. But the way it was broken down was... You know, they are stakeholders in land, they own warehouses that the NHS use. The King had earned 11.4 million from an NHS depot where electric ambulances are stored. So the conversation, it was very much centred about should the royal family be earning millions of pounds from cash-strapped public services. And again, I mean, this is a whole new issue, isn't it? A whole, a whole different issue. And you could talk to the cows come home about it, but... The, the, you know, the, the royal family are obviously incredibly wealthy, have incredible privilege, and I think we've always argued, especially at the Daily Mirror, that there should be some more transparency over the way that royal finances are handled. They are often shrouded in mystery. I mean, you know, their tax affairs are, are quite complex, the facts of where their money comes from. But I don't think William's shying away from these things, and uh, they're, they're too, the two aren't mutually exclusive. Um, in my mind. He does have to have an awareness on his role as Prince of Wales and the future king, but also have a role on, uh, on uh, you know, trying to do things for Britain and trying to, to make things a bit more successful moving forward. Well, I think the thing is now, you know, uh, so much transparency, we can look on our own computers and, and uh, look into these financial aspects of the royal family. It, people have argued in the past they've given too much money. You've got the sovereign grant where they get certain amounts of money, but they're always going to have, you know, land. They're always going to rent land out. The Duchy of Cornwall earns certain amounts of money. And yes, there are going to be some instances where somebody isn't happy with a particular aspect of it. But I suppose when you look at the portfolio and the enormity of it, are they any worse than any other landlord? Maybe not. It's difficult to say, but it's a small 
number of people who aren't happy and hopefully now that's going to be put right by, yeah, yeah, by I think those in charge. We've, we've, we've raised it, you know, the Duchess said that there are moves to improve things so I suppose uh, you know, watch this space, we'll obviously be following it up and, uh, and again Royal Finances is something that we do tackle at the Daily Mirror, it is an important role of, uh, of, of holding the Royal family to account. So I suppose wrapping up, you know, we have had, uh, we've had a great week here in Cape Town. We're looking forward to getting back to our families. There's been a few, good few weeks on the road, um, bringing you all the stories from down under, from Samoa, here in Cape Town. Of course, there's a really important weekend coming up, the Festival of Remembrance at the Royal Albert Hall on Saturday evening, then Remembrance Sunday services at the Cenotaph, which is always one of those dates cemented in the royal calendar. We're hoping to see the Princess of Wales. Hopefully the Queen will make it as well. Hopefully she's feeling better after her um, chest infection during the week. Um, and I think that uh, yeah, the, the, there is cause for positivity for next year. You know, we do know that the King is wanting to get back to work. Um, well, I will mention the ITV documentary about uh, Queen Camilla and her work um, with domestic violence, victims and survivors and campaigners. It is called Her Majesty Behind the Scenes. If you haven't seen it, it's available on ITVX. I will try and find out where it's going to be available across the world as well. But well, I was lucky enough to go to a screening last week and it, and it really is an incredible eye-opener about her work in the field. It's something that she's been doing since about 2016, so it's nearly you know, eight, eight or so years now. Um, and this is a call, the cause-driven work that the royal family are doing is really, really interesting and important and something that does deserve to have a light shone on it. So. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we have had uh, a really great time. Thank you to our South African hosts, everybody in Cape Town we've come across. Uh, we've been really, really welcomed with open arms. And um, until next time. Pod save the king!